Hey everyone, it's Ashley. It's been a while. I think about a month or so since my last video and it didn't intend on that, but moving to New Brunswick was a lot of work. The driving, the unpacking, everything. But the biggest reason is because we are actually a part of the Atlantic bubble in Canada and New Brunswick requires you to self-isolate for two weeks upon arrival. So I couldn't get the internet hooked up, I had no cable and no ability to do anything. So we were pretty busy like unpacking and getting settled anyways. But I thought I'd jump on here and do a tag video. It's called the second tome around tag and it's all about used books. And um, as you can see, my shelves are full of them. So I thought I'd do this. It's not the most Christmassy tag, but I assure you it's Christmassy outside. And I'm gonna show you some footage of my backyard. It's beautiful, but it's snowing right now. So I took a little video, I'll insert it here. And um, yeah, so this tag was done by a hungry bookworm. I'll link her channel below and I actually found it from Carol Marie Reads and I'll put her channel down below too. Okay, so question number one is do you buy secondhand books? And most of what I'm sitting in front of is from a secondhand shop. I still buy new books. I think it's fun to go to bookshops, especially supporting independent booksellers and the book industry but I couldn't afford to read the amount that I do if I paid full price for them, unfortunately. So I do utilize secondhand bookshops and uh, libraries. And it's something I do with my mom. We kind of scoot around and, and look for books and it's just been like fun over the years and a good memory with her. Um, two, what is and was your latest purchase? So I'm just gonna get these books down here. So we had to quarantine, like I said, and um, the first day out, we looked up a Valley Village, and in Canada, a Valley Village is a thrift store, and we scooted out. I just, I, I just needed to kind of treat myself, I guess, because I'd been in isolation with my two 70-year-old parents for two weeks, which was amazing, but also, you know, I just, and I was stressed. <laughs> and what do we do? We buy books when we're stressed. So I went and the selection was really good. It was different from the books that I used to find in my city. And I was really quite impressed. So I don't know if there's any other bookstores around me, but this was just the first one I saw. The first book I found was called Cod. And I think I saw this on Triumphal Reads channel and he had mentioned it. I also, um, this is by Mark Kurlansky. I also own Salt which is another book by the same author. So I found both of these at used bookstores in fairly good condition. And I like these like micro nonfiction reads on a very, um, you know, a small topic and you learn everything about them. And essentially this one is the biography of Cod. And it just sort of talks about how Europeans settled in North America and relied on this as a food source and it even goes back to the Icelandic sagas and how the Vikings used to freeze it and dry it and eat it then. So it'll talk about the gastronomic side of things, also the economic, and then it talks about the environmental depletion of the species and I thought it would be a really interesting read. And the other one that I picked up was Whenever I see these black penguin classic editions that are in really good condition, I tend to pick them up. And this one is Alexandre Dumas, The Black Tulip. I haven't read The Count of Monte Cristo. I heard there are some parallels between the two and that it's both kind of a, about someone being wrongfully accused. I'll read you the back of this. Um, it says, Cornelius Van Burl, a respectable tulip grower, lives only to cultivate the elusive black tulip and win a magnificent prize for its creation. But after his powerful godfather is assassinated, the unwitting, unwitting Cornelius becomes caught up in deadly political intrigue and is falsely accused of high treason by a bitter rival. Condemned to life imprisonment, his only comfort is Rosa, the jailer's beautiful daughter, and together they concoct a plan to grow the black tulip in secret. Dumas's late last major historical novel is a tale of romantic love, jealousy, and obsession, interweaving historical events surrounding the brutal murders of two Dutch statesmen in 1672 with the phenomenon of tulipomania that gripped the 17th century Holland. So it's much thinner than Count of Monte Cristo, so I thought I'd give that a try. 
Um, and next question, question number three is, what condition do you find acceptable in your used books? So I'm not really too picky about like broken spines or like little creases or folded over pages. I even sometimes like if I'm buying a classic and it has notes written in. Um, sometimes I find that interesting just to see how people critically analyzed the book that they were reading and it can give me insight that I might have missed as well. But I think the deal breaker is stinky books. And so I always do like the smell test and water damage. Like just, I just can't. Um, next question, question number four. After you have read said book, do you keep it or redonate? And I definitely redonate. Uh, I'll keep books that I want to build a library with. So whether it's like a five star read that I absolutely loved or one I might reference. And now that I'm kind of doing these videos, maybe I would keep them on hand for that. But I typically give them to friends or donate them back to the thrift store thrift shop. I don't ever sell them. I don't know why, but I've only paid a couple dollars for them. So it's no big deal to me. Um, five, do you have a favorite place to go when you're looking for secondhand books? Now in the city I used to live in, in Ontario, the whole city, there was not a single independent bookseller or used bookstore, which was really sad. The last one existed when I was in high school and it was actually my English teacher's wife. And I used to go to that one, but after that, I had no way, I'd only go to thrift stores. Um, but I'm gonna show you photos of my favorite ever <laughs> used bookstore, and it was in Inverness, Scotland. And I would say in Scotland period, going to the used bookstores was surreal. This one was truly magical. It had different levels and winding staircases. And if you went to the top level, it overlooked. Um, and in the center was the owner's desk and he just faced all these books. It was heaven. To work there would be heaven. And yeah, I think that one was definitely, that was something I never experienced in Canada ever. And that would be my favorite. Um, next question, number six. Uh, or sorry, yeah, number six, hardback or paperback? And I have no preference. If I find it and I love it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I know people kind of, the weight might bother the wrist or something like that, but um, yeah, in terms of second hand, I'll pick up either one. If I'm buying new, it tends to be a paperback just because of price, which is sort of sad, but um, yeah. And I should probably support, you know, hardcover releases more. And the last question, have you found any gems? And I don't think any of the books that I have behind me are particularly like spectacular in that they're worth something. Uh, but the one that I could think of was a first edition. I actually got this in Scotland as well. I think it was near St. Andrews. Um, but yeah, it's Daphne du Maurier's New Stories and it's called The Breaking Point. And this is a first edition in 1959 and yeah, I think it's 1959. Yeah. So I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to get something from this place. And this was a lucky find. It wasn't too much either. The condition isn't perfect. Like there's obviously like little tears and stuff like that, but that would probably be the only special book that I truly have on my shelves from the used bookstore. So that's it for the tag, uh, short and sweet, and I tag all of you to do this and let me know if you do it because I'd love to watch your videos and or you can even answer the questions in the comments below. So I hope you're having a good December. It's good to see you guys again or talk to you and until the next time, bye!